Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano. Welcome back to my batch rendering mini series. So last time we took a look at dynamic geometry, basically how we could populate our vertex buffer on the fly as we're rendering so that we could introduce all of this kind of batch rendering stuff to not be static, but be dynamic. Check out that video if you haven't already. And now we're actually nearing the end of this series, finally, because some of us want to get back to doing other things. And today we're gonna to talk about our index buffer and learn how we can actually make our index buffer, how we can expand it to support all of the different quads, all of the different geometry that we actually want to render. Now, last time I gave you guys a little bit of an exercise. I said at the end of the episode, see if you can figure out how we can actually extend that index buffer. So I hope that many of you tried my little challenge and have hopefully worked out the solution for yourselves because today I'm gonna show you how to do it. And to be honest, it's really not that hard. If we look at the index buffer that we have, and I'll probably jump into the code and explain it there because it will be a little bit easier to understand when you actually see stuff, but our index buffer is made up of a repeating pattern. It kind of goes zero, one, two, two, three, zero. That's what makes up a quad. We draw two triangles right next to each other from the first four vertices in our vertex buffer. And that's what makes up a square. That's what makes up our quad. So if we take that pattern and we extend it over as many quads as we need, which we're going to define a predefined value here, then we're going to get our index buffer being able to support all of our different quads that we want to render. Now in a batch renderer, it's likely you may want to render more than just quads. For example, maybe you want to render lines and that requires a slightly different index buffer. But for quads, the benefit is that a quads index buffer is easily repeatable and expandable and scalable and extrapolatable, whatever, you guys get the point, across as many quads as we want to render. It's not like a 3D model where the indices may be completely different model to model and you obviously need a unique index buffer per model, most likely. With quads, things a lot simpler as you'll see. So let's jump in and see how we can extend our index buffer. If we take a look at the way that we currently handle our index buffer, it's made up of these indices, 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0, and then later 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 4. This makes up our second quad, this makes up our first quad. And as I mentioned, you can see that there is a pattern here. Unlike the vertex buffer, which is obviously something that you can't predict, I mean, it entirely depends on the scene that you're rendering, the index buffer really is kind of the same. We just kind of scale this pattern over all of the quads that we want to render. So that means that we can kind of create this up front. Now at the moment, we're creating our vertex buffer up front as well. We're not filling it with any kind of data because of course that's impossible for us to know until we actually start rendering over here in the update function. However, with indices, of course, we do know the pattern. So we can actually say that if we want 1000 vertices, which translates to 250 quads, then we can fill our index buffer with the correct indices. So the first step is deciding how many quads you want to actually draw. What is the maximum number of quads that I can draw in a single draw call? So just arbitrarily throwing a number out there, let's just say 1000. With that in mind, I'm actually going to come over here just before we create all of our vertex arrays and all of that and just write in some constants. So we're gonna have a const size T max quad count. And as mentioned, I'm gonna set that to 1000. And then we're also going to, from this max quad count, create a max vertex count and also a max index count. So in other words, we're basically calculating how many vertices we can have and how many indices we can have. So I'll copy this and I'll change this to max vertex count, max index count. Now, even though it is called max index count, it's really just the index count because of course, we're just gonna put all of those indices in there. So how many vertices per quad? We have four, so we can just write max quad count times four. And how many indices per quad? Six. So we can write max quad count times six. Now we know the size of our vertex buffer in terms of vertices and also the size of our index buffer in terms of indices. So with this max vertex count, I'm gonna take this and instead of just using 1000 here, we're gonna use that max vertex count variable. So in other words, and I'll rearrange this because I kind of like writing it this way, we're gonna have max vertex count, which is 1000 times four, so 4000 vertices times the size of our vertex. That's how large our vertex buffer is gonna be in bytes. Coming down here, we're gonna do the same thing for the index buffer. What I wanna do is write a little for loop that's going to continue this pattern on for as many indices as we need, which in this case is 6,000 indices. I'll comment all this out. I'll leave it here for reference. And then what I'm going to do is write another one of these UN32T indices with the max index count. 
and then I'm gonna write a little for loop. Since we have a recurring pattern of six numbers here, I'm just gonna increment this i variable by six, and then we're gonna handle the entire pattern of six numbers inside this for loop. So what I've done here is I've encoded this pattern into these kind of offsets here, and then every time we move through an iteration of this for loop, I increment the offset by four, because four, of course, is the difference between all of these indices. And that's it, we now have an index buffer that follows this pattern all the way up to our max index count. And if we scroll down here to our index buffer, this code doesn't change at all because we've just simply redefined the size of indices and we're still storing them in indices. So this is all great. Now with that in mind, we're pretty much ready to render. We don't really even need to change anything. If I launch this, it's, it still should work because we're still drawing 12 indices according to our draw elements call. And obviously changing everything to a for loop didn't actually change the first 12 indices. They're still the same values. So here we have the exact same result as last time, but the power of this obviously is the fact that we can now draw up to 1000 quads. So let's go ahead and change this kind of create quad function we have here so that we can actually write a little for loop that renders maybe a grid of quads using our two textures. The way that I wrote this create quad function last time as just a basic example was just a function that returns this array of four vertices. What I wanna do instead is change this to take in a target buffer and this function is simply going to add another four vertices. So add another quad into that target buffer and then increment the pointer of course. So what I'll do is change the return type to vertex pointer because it's going to need to return the position inside the buffer that it's up to. And then I'll simply replace all of these vertices with the target. I'll also get rid of all these vertex variables here as well. And after every vertex, I will increment the buffer pointer. Finally, the last thing I'll do is actually return the target buffer position that we're up to. If I scroll down here to the calling code, what I'm gonna do is inside this update function, I'm gonna create an array that's essentially going to store as many vertices as I need. So we're probably not gonna draw that many, but I'm just gonna chuck a thousand in here just for fun, really. Then what I'm gonna do is write a for loop that's going to render a grid of our textures. I'll write a nested for loop here, and then I'll also get a pointer to the block of memory that we've allocated inside our vertices array, which of course is just some memory on the stack. We'll then create our quads inside this for loop, and then I'll just set the texture ID to alternate based on our position within the grid. I'll also keep one of our original quads whose position we could control through IAM GUI. We can obviously get rid of all these mem copies here because all of our data is inside that vertices array. And then we'll just come over here and upload all of the vertices. And that's pretty much it. The only problem is we are still drawing 12 indices, so we have to make sure that every time we create a quad, we increment some kind of index counter variable. So I'll just come up here and I'll write our index count. I'll set it to zero. And then every time we draw a quad, I'll just increment it by six. And I'll do the same after our movable quad. I'll obviously use the index count inside our draw elements call. And I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and see what we get. Okay, so as you can see, we now have a grid of all of these different quads with different textures. And I can still, of course, control this. So now, theoretically speaking, we can render up to 1000 quads in a single batch because our index buffer now supports that. All right, so as you can see, pretty simple concept. And now we can render up to 1000 quads. So the last piece of the puzzle, we've covered pretty much everything in this mini series. I mean, we could cover like texture slots and more advanced stuff about that. And maybe we'll address that in the future. But now that we have all of these videos and now that we have all of this information, the last step is to kind of put it all together into a batch renderer. How do we build a renderer out of this that we can just kind of throw data at and it will figure out how to batch it all together and render it in as least amount of draws as possible. That's what we're gonna talk about next time. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Also leave a comment below with your thoughts or any other questions you may have, things that maybe I didn't cover or I skipped over. Also a huge thank you to all the patrons that help support this channel and make videos like these possible. Patreon.com forward slash the channel is the best way to support this channel. So if you guys like what you're seeing and you wanna see more of this stuff in the future, then please show your support on Patreon. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.